I'm April and I'm an educator here at the Station North Tool Library in Baltimore, Maryland. Thanks so much for tuning in. We're going to make some masks today. I'm going to take you through all the steps and we're going to have a lot of fun. Thanks to Domesticity Studio for developing this pattern and also for coordinating the outreach with hospitals. I really miss teaching a lot. As an educator, my job is to make content accessible and fun to my students. However, in no way do I want to normalize what's happening right now. It breaks my heart that this is what's required of us to show support for our healthcare workers right now on the front lines. All right, let's get started. First of all, you'll need some 100% cotton straight grain fabric. You don't want to use any solid colors and no blue or white pattern fabrics. This is so that hospitals can differentiate our masks from the hospital grade masks. Um, next up, it'll be really helpful if you have a water soluble fabric pen. You'll need some thread, a ruler, scissors, or a rotary cutter. You'll also need ball head pins in two different colors. You'll need four inches of twill tape or ribbon or just a piece of fabric that's cut into um, a four inch wide by one and a quarter inch piece. And you'll need either two 48 inch long pieces of twill tape, ribbon, or seam binding. You don't want to use anything that's too slippery. And so you'll need, you'll need this for pattern A. And then if you want to make pattern B, you'll want two pieces of quarter inch elastic cut into seven inches each. So the first thing that we're going to do is iron our fabric. This isn't a super necessary first step, but it just makes it a little bit easier to work with. I always find that ironing all the traces out just makes it a little bit easier to deal with. For step two, you want to place your fabric right side down on if you have a cutting mat. And I'm going to measure out a nine by 14 inch rectangle, but you can do this same step with scissors. And I'm gonna use my water soluble fabric pen to draw that out. I'm going to then take my rotary cutter and cut along that line. Step three, I'm going to take my piece of fabric and fold it in half with the right sides together. And now I'm gonna head over to my sewing machine and sew this up. Okay, so in this tutorial, I'll be taking you through the steps to make both pattern A, which looks like this um, with the straps, and pattern B, which has elastic instead of the straps. They're, you can make them pretty similarly, I've found. Um, there's just one step that's a little bit different. So I've got my nine by 14 inch piece of fabric here that's folded in half with the right sides together. And I'm going to pin my two pieces of fabric, or my two pieces of elastic. I'm gonna open this up and pin them about a half an inch down from where that fold is. And then again, a half an inch, about a half an inch away. About, I guess that's about an inch away from the edge. And this is facing in, like so. Here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to come over to my sewing machine. And I'm gonna sew along the edges. As soon as I sew past that first piece of elastic, I'm going to pull out my pin, my first pin.
and the same with my second piece of elastic. And then I'm going to stitch up to about 5 eighths of an inch away from the end and then I'll stop my machine. And with the needle sunk into the fabric, I'm going to raise the presser foot and then pivot. And then I'm going to sew down the line here. And I'll do the same thing at about 5 eighths of an inch away from the edge. I'm going to sink my needle into the fabric, raise the presser foot and pivot. And then I'm going to stitch all the way until about um, an inch away, making sure that I still grab my piece of elastic there. And once I get past the piece of elastic, I'm going to stop sewing. So now I'm going to turn it right side out through this little hole here that I've left. This is definitely my least favorite part of doing this, which is why it's also essential to have really good jams going while you're listening, while you're making these. Um, personally, I've been listening to a lot of prints. Okay, so I've finished turning this inside out and I like to just stick the scissors in and go into the corners at the very end just to make everything nice and neat. And now I'm going to just sew that little opening closed. That's right here. So I'm going to fold that in. and um, push these two sides together. And I'm just gonna stitch right along the edge here. Also known as edge stitching. I like to trim all the little bits as I go along, all the little extra pieces of thread, because then I don't have to do it all at the end. Um, and I've got my um, pattern A here. It's the same, except I don't have the elastic. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to sew that hole closed. So I've got my two masks, mask A and mask B. And now I'm gonna teach you how to do something called pin tucking. Thing. So I've got mask A here, and I'm going to place my measuring tape on the top. And I'm gonna have, I've got two different colors of long ball head straight pins. I've got white and yellow. And I'm gonna take the white pins and I'm going to place a pin at the two inch mark, a white pin at the three and a half inch mark. And at the five inch mark. And then I'm going to take my yellow pins and I'm going to place a yellow pin exactly one inch below each of my white pins. So here I'm going an inch down and the same for right here. And then one more over here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side. And I'll do this for both of my masks. Now I'm gonna take the white pins and fold them down so that they are touching the yellow pin below. And then I'm gonna remove the yellow pin and then just pin that down both sides so that my pin is going through all of the fabric and it's holding that fold in place. And this is gonna be creating these pin tucks, which will allow the fabric to conform more easily to the curvature of a face. 
Got my second one here, folding it down. And pinning. And like I said before, uh, what I've been doing is breaking each of these steps up into multiples. So I'll cut, up, I'll cut a bunch of squares at once, and then I'll fold a bunch at once, and then I'll go over to my machine and I'll stitch out a bunch at once, and then I'll do the pin tucking stage. So I'm doing uh, large groups of each of these at once, Henry Ford style. So I've pinned my last one here, and then you should have a nice little, it's starting to look like a mask. This mask is starting to look like a mask. Um, so we can go back to the sewing machine with this. So we're back at the sewing machine, and I'm gonna, you'll notice I'm just scooting my pins out a little bit so that I can more easily remove them as I'm sewing. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew along the side here And this is mask A. And you can see I'm pulling my pins out as I go. And then at the end, I'm reversing just to put a tack on the end of that row. Cutting my excess thread. And now I'm gonna go to the other side here. So now I've got both sides of mask A stitched down. And then um, I'll do the same for mask B. Okay, so my next step is to take my four inch long strip of twill tape and I'm going to pin that to the front of my mask. And this is so that once the mask gets to the hospital, they can put a piece of wire in and it can be shaped around your nose. So I'm gonna pin that into the center of my mask and it's gonna be about a quarter inch down from the top. And I'll pin that in place. And now for this, I'm going to sew down one side, down the next side, and then across the third side, but I'm gonna leave the fourth side open and that's so that they can insert the wire once it gets to the hospital. So lower my presser foot and stitch along. There we go. All right, I'm stitching as close to the edge as I possibly can. And I like to pull my pins out right before I the needle gets there. There are varying schools of thought about whether or not you can safely sew over a pin. Um, I've seen it be okay and I've seen it go real wrong. <laughs> so just like er earlier on, once I get to the edge, I'm gonna leave my needle in the fabric and raise the presser foot and pivot. Stitch along that last edge there. And then do the reverse at the right edge. Oh man, this mask is gonna look so professional. And you've got now your piece of fabric or twill tape that the wire can be inserted into. And so mask B is essentially finished, um, but there's one step left that I have to do for mask A. And that is to stitch these two ribbons along the edge. And so I'm gonna find my center point by folding them in half, and I'm gonna pin them to the sides. And grosgrain ribbon or twill tape or bias tape are all great for these. You just don't want anything that's too slick. 
because you want them to be able to stay tied. Thanks for going on this journey with me. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch my ribbons to the mask. Thanks for tuning in. We have this amazing donation box out front of the Station North Tool Library where you can drop off your homemade PPE or um, your, your masks or if you have any other PPE, any gloves or N95 masks, you can put them in here as well. Um, if you are donating your homemade masks, go ahead and put them in a Ziploc bag, in a sealed Ziploc bag with your name and the pattern that you made and also how many are in here and if you do live in a home with pets let us know that too just for allergy information and you can just put it in the box so let's get making some masks y'all thanks again and hope to see you at the tool library soon bye